Hair Gal here. Today I'm going to talk about the chaga mushroom based on a special request from one of my subscribers. The chaga mushroom is purported to do a lot of great things for the human body, including killing cancer cells, reducing inflammation, protecting the liver, enhancing cognition, and reducing fatigue. The purpose of this video is to go through the evidence to really identify whether there's enough data to show that the chaga mushroom has these effects on the human body. Before I go into the details, I'm going to make one thing known, that my videos are meant to provide an objective evaluation of whatever supplement I'm reviewing based on the hard data that's out there. I want to iterate that the lack of evidence does not mean evidence of lack, just because a certain supplement has not been studied enough on humans does not mean that it doesn't work in humans. There's just not enough evidence to support that. So I will step off that soapbox and now talk about the chaga mushroom. The chaga mushroom, also known as Inodinus obliquus, is a parasitic black fungus that grows on birch trees. Birch trees grow in colder regions, so the chaga mushroom typically grows in northern cold regions. It's extremely resilient and can withstand major environmental stressors like invasive pathogens, freezing temperatures, UV radiation. These resilient properties are likely why the chaga mushroom may hold medicinal value in humans. The chaga mushroom has been used as a folk medicinal remedy, mainly in Russia and Northern Europe. It was made popular in the Western world when it was introduced in one of Alexander Solzhenitsyn's novels called Cancer Ward. There are many studies published on the chaga mushroom. To be exact, there are over 190 studies. In vitro studies show that chaga mushroom can inhibit cancer cells and specifically target the death of cancer cells while keeping healthy cells alive. In vitro studies have also found that chaga has anti-diabetic effects, anti-inflammatory effects, and antiviral effects. In animal studies, chaga has been shown to enhance cognition, reduce fatigue. It's been shown to have anti-inflammatory, pain relieving, exercise endurance enhancing, anti-diabetic, and anti-cancer properties in mice. There are a lot of studies, like I said, that's, that have been published on the chaga mushroom. However, none of them have actually been clinical trials. To give you a little perspective, there are approximately 170 studies on the lion's mane mushroom, two of which are clinical trials. There are over 800 published studies on psilocybin, and over 50 of those are cl human clinical trials. There have been studies of the chaga mushroom on human cells, and these studies have shown chaga mushroom to have anti-cancer property effects. Another study testing chaga on human cells took human gut cells from people with inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, and they were able to show that chaga decreased inflammatory markers in gut cells of those people. All of those studies on human cells, though, were in petri dishes, so they were in vitro studies. There were no studies that took people and had them consume a chaga mushroom extract and measured a specific outcome. There's a lot of evidence to support that chaga holds promising therapeutic value to humans. These are based off of in vitro studies and animal studies, and I wasn't able to find any human clinical studies on chaga mushroom. Without human data, it's really hard to say whether chaga mushroom holds the same therapeutic values that it shows in in vitro studies and animal studies. Just because it works in a petri dish or in a mouse doesn't mean that it's gonna work in a human body. I've gotten a question before on a previous video about, well, if it works in mice, well, it should work in humans. Phylogenetically, humans are much different and much more complicated than mice. Although we share a lot of genes, we're both mammals, we also have a lot of genetic differences and um, what works on a mouse may not work on a human. Only 10% of positive drug study results in mice and with similar results in humans. In other words, of all the drugs that have been tested and have found to be effective in mice, only 10% of those medications are effective in humans. There's no evidence to support that chaga mushroom actually works in human beings. And in order for us to elucidate that question, we need to perform randomized clinical control trials I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying that based on the scientific literature, there's no evidence to say that it works in humans. As I was editing this video on my vacation in Hawaii, which is a beautiful place, by the way, there's a snapshot, 
I realized I missed a few important things that I wanted to mention. I find it rather peculiar that despite all of the in vitro and animal studies that show that chaga has such promising therapeutic potential, there have yet to be any human clinical trials on it. This might have something to do with the fact that human clinical trials are expensive. And so the majority of human clinical trials are funded by pharmaceutical companies. And the way pharmaceutical companies work is that they discover a drug and then they quickly patent it because they want full ownership over that drug in case it shows promising results. Because if it does show promising results, they'll likely make a lot of money from that drug. The thing about the chaga mushroom, as well as all other mushrooms and herbal supplements, is that they are not able to be patented. And so there's no incentive for pharmaceutical companies to pour millions of dollars into human clinical trials when they can't patent the chaga mushroom or whatever herbal supplement of interest. There are a few really important things that you need to know about chaga before you ingest it, if you decide to do so. There are mainly three things that you wanna know. The first thing is that chaga has antiplatelet properties, which means that it can thin your blood. So people who are taking antiplatelets or any blood thinners uh, need to watch out for this because chaga can make someone more prone to bleeding, especially if they're on blood thinners. Number two, I mentioned earlier that chaga has anti-diabetic properties, which means it can lower blood sugar. People who are diabetics who are already taking medications that lower blood sugar can potentially be harmed if they use chaga because it can lower the blood sugar even more. The third thing that you need to know before consuming chaga is that it has a high amount of oxalates. Oxalates are chemicals that are found in many different foods, including spinach, a lot of leafy green vegetables, um, but in high amounts, they can cause kidney stones. There was one case that was published on a woman who ended up getting kidney damage because she had been consuming four to five teaspoons of chaga for about six months, and the kidney damage was caused by high levels of oxalates. So there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it informative. Please hit the like button if you like it. Please feel free to share your chaga experiences in the comment section below. And please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want more informative videos like this. Thanks, and we'll catch you next time.